want to get started with the program. So at this time, it's my pleasure to bring up our chair of the board, who's also our presenting sponsor today, and she will introduce uh, our speakers. So uh, please, uh, again, welcome to the stage, Danell Dadigan from the Hollywood Museum at the historic Max Factor Building. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Before we start, we should welcome Laurent Gubler back from his vacation. Uh, it was a marathon, marathon trip for him to return on time. Uh, somehow he went over the Atlantic Ocean twice to be able to return home from Switzerland. Don't ask me how, but that's what happened. So uh, welcome back, Laurent. You just made it last night just in time. We're pl a pleasure to have you here. So it is truly a pleasure for me today as the presenting sponsor on behalf of the Hollywood Museum and the historic Max Factor Building to introduce our very own State Senate President Pro Tempore Emeritus, Kevin DeLeon. He is the son of an immigrant mother who supported her family in the San Diego Barrio of Logan Heights, working as a housekeeper along with other side jobs. He is the first in his family to graduate from high school and college. Senator De Leon, President Pro Tempore Emeritus of the California State Senate, has proven to truly be a tenacious leader. Senator De Leon made his Hollywood debut as our assembly member beginning in 2006 when he was elected to the 45th Assembly District. He served the assembly for four years before his election to the Senate in 2010. He is the first person in California history to serve as the chair of the appropriation committees in both the assembly and Senate. Bravo. In 2014, Senator De Leon was elected by his colleagues to lead the Senate making him the first Latino to hold the position in more than a century. Bravo. During his three years serving the Senate's lead, Kevin De Leon led the 40-member Senate body to historic accomplishments that will improve the lives of Californians and the state environment and economy for decades to come. Senator De Leon secured in 2014 the Hollywood Film Tax Credit Program. Senator De Leon, every sponsor here today and the Hollywood community joins us in thanking you for this history-making tax credit incentive program. Thank you. He has ushered in a bold agenda to increase economic opportunity for all Californians with a focus on maintaining California's global leadership role in fighting climate change and building a clean energy economy and rebuilding our state's infrastructure. Along with public education in the workplace and health care, equity for women, immigrants, and low-wage workers, and public safety. Through his ambitious approach to policy making, Senator De Leon has authored groundbreaking legislation on a variety of issues, and they have become national models. The progress that has been made on these critical issues confronting California and the nation stands in stark contrast to the gridlock in the U.S. Congress. With his leadership and landmark legislation, Senator De Leon has established California's reputation as a recognized global leader in the battle against climate change and a pioneer in creating a clean energy economy. Continuing steady progress in efficiency energy, I should say in energy efficiency, Kevin has put California on the path to 50% renewable energy by 2030. And I'm not sure if many of you knew, but California is the largest state in the nation to do so. And with an eye toward becoming 100% renewable, Senator De Leon 
is going to be working to make this happen by 2040. So I wish you the best in helping us all. Thank you. All of these above goals exemplify his long-time commitment in to increase access to the environment. And did you know, uh, Kevin was the, his first legislative measure when he arrived in Sacramento once upon a time was to allocate park funds to her communities lacking parks and green space, resulting in 126 park projects across the state. And you know, this is the largest initiative of its kind in the nation. So, bravo. The road to California's future infrastructure has long been in disrepair. This year, our Senator Kevin DeLeon led the legislature in creating solutions that will benefit future generations of Californians. He was instrumental in shepherding SB1 into law this year, making an additional $5.4 billion a year investment in roads, freeway, bridge, and transit projects over the next decade. The result will be lower commute times and safer roads and job creation. Now we can applaud. <laughs> Senator De Leon also this year successfully passed SB5, giving Californians the opportunity to make long overdue investments in our parks and flood control infrastructure with a $4 billion general obligation bond measure. In 2016, Senator De Leon championed the No Place Like Home initiative, an innovative and ambitious proposal to address homelessness in California by securing $2 billion in bond financing for construction and rehabilitation of permanent supportive housing for chronically homeless Californians suffering from mental illness. Thank you. With his Senate term coming to an end in 2018, Kevin won the Democratic Party's endorsement for his run to California's U.S. state seat against incumbent Dianne Feinstein. You know, while putting all of this together for the introduction, I realized the Senator has been very, very busy. So thank you, Senator, for all you do. Thank you. We are so grateful to have the Senator join us in his fourth State of the State Address to the Hollywood community. Ladies and gentlemen, please join the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce in welcoming to the stage our very own California State Senate President Pro Tempore Emeritus, Kevin De Leon. Kevin? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Please, 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 please. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Please. Please, thank you so much. Danelle, I want to thank you very much for, uh, I, you wrote, you, you actually read my whole speech. So, my name is Kevin DeLeon and I'm out of here. Goodbye, everybody. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for that very kind introduction uh, of, of my person. Uh, thank you so very much. Let's get up for Danelle, please. I want to give a very special thank you to Sean, too, at Paramount Studios, because this is the fourth annual State of the State speech that has been done right here in Paramount Studios. And uh, uh, I, uh, I owe a debt of gratitude to Paramount Studios for being so gracious, for being so wonderful in hosting such an incredible event. Uh, it's a sold out event as always and Paramount has always played as usual. So to Paramount Studios, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> there are a few folks I do want to recognize before I get into the uh, content of my speech today. Uh, I do want to recognize uh, someone who's been with me for a very long time. And she has been an incredible, an incredible fighting spirit. Um, this is a, a woman who, quite frankly, I sort of deem 
the unofficial mayor of Hollywood. And because of her, uh, she put Hollywood on my mind. She put it on my map uh, because of her advocacy, uh, because of her passion, uh, because of her love for the people of Hollywood, the businesses in Hollywood, for the spirit of Hollywood. And she made sure that you all had a strong voice uh, in your state capital, in Sacramento. She has educated me. She has, quite frankly, introduced me to many of you who are here present today. And that's no other. And, and she's such a unique person. She's such a unique woman. And there's not going to be anyone like her. That is Baitsar Tomasian. Baitsar Tomasian. Anyway. Baitsar, please stand up. Please stand up, Baitsar. I want to give and also an incredible shout out uh, and, and just really convey my, my deep appreciation for who he is and for 26 years of incredible leadership. As Donnell just mentioned a few moments ago, uh, Laron was over on the other side of the ocean and he was coming in from Ireland and three, half, three and a half hours into his flight uh, going over Greenland, over the Atlantic Ocean, uh, for whatever reasons, the pilot said they need to return back. Some technical issues, not with the plane, but rather with some paper, you know, and they had to turn back. So that was seven hours unnecessarily going over and back the Atlantic Ocean. But he said to them, listen, I need to be back, you know, in Hollywood because I need to be at my luncheon, you know. And he was supposed to be back last Monday. Today is Friday. And Laurent made it back at 11.30 p.m. last night, Thursday night. You know, Laurent, for 26 years of enthusiasm, of dedication, of commitment uh, that you have given your heart and soul to Hollywood. And uh, there are a lot of folks here who remember. There were a lot of folks who abandoned Hollywood. Didn't want anything to do with Hollywood. You had tourists from all over the country, from all over the world, who would come to Hollywood, Hollywood Boulevard, and they would be shocked because they would say to themselves, or at least think to themselves, this is the Hollywood that we see in the movies, that we see on television? And there were quite a few folks who just abandoned Hollywood altogether. And quite frankly, it was easy to abandon Hollywood for a whole variety of reasons. But Laron stayed dedicated and committed. And during the course of 26 years, he elevated the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce to international stature, where everyone now is proud to call Hollywood their home. Their home for businesses, their home for our communities, their home for our students. And a, we own a grit of data, too, for the incredible 26 years of service that Laron has given us here in Hollywood. My friend, Laron Gugler, congratulations. Thank you very much. I want to give a, a very special shout out to two uh, principals that we have here as well, uh, two high schools here in Hollywood. Uh, from Hollywood High School uh, down the street here, the, the Sheiks, we have uh, Edward or Ed uh, Colacion. I don't know if Ed is still here. Ed, please rise. The principal of Hollywood High School. And we also have with us Paul Hirsch, the principal of STEM Academy at Helen Bernstein High School too. I, I, I'm glad that you uh, uh, signaled to me and, and introduced yourself, and I'm glad to know that we have two fine educators, two fine administrators, two fine principals here who are doing everything within their power to improve the human condition for the residents who live in and around our community here in Hollywood. And they're also here to, to speak with all of you, too, because they need internships. They need internships for their students. And we want to make sure that happens, both at Helen Bernstein as well as Hollywood High School. So to all of you, I want to thank you very much. It's been a whirlwind uh, for me. Last night, I was uh, near Yosemite. For those who, who know of it, a small town, I think there's maybe perhaps 2,000 population. It's called Twain Heart, right in the middle of Tuolumne County, which is perhaps about half hour away from Yosemite. 
I was there to give a speech. Uh, about 200 people came uh, to this speech, and then I drove two hours uh, into Twain Hart, and last night I drove another two hours back into Sacramento, got there about 11 p.m. at night, or 12 p.m. at night, got on a flight this morning, landed in Burbank, right out this parking lot here at the Paramount Studios. I was on the phone call with the editorial board of the Sacramento Bee, trying to secure their endorsement, their support for my 100% clean energy for the state of California by the year 2045. Got out of the car, came out here to, to, to what is, to me, the, the, the funnest of, uh, of the part of, of today is to just meet and reacquaint myself with, with old friends and meet new friends. Uh, when I finish here, I will be back in the car. I will drive back to Burbank Airport, get on a plane, fly up to Sacramento, get picked up in Sacramento, drive out to Amador County where I'll be giving a keynote speech in a place called Jackson, if you know where Jackson is, you know, near Lake Tahoe. Then on Saturday morning, I will get in a car, go into Stockton in Central Valley, California with the NAACP and give a speech on human and civil rights and voting rights for California and for the rest of the nation. So it's been a whirlwind going up and down the state of California. But for me, coming back home, coming back home here in the city of Los Angeles, here in the Hollywood, makes me always feel good. Coming back to see each and every one of you, it, it is an incredible honor, and I'm happy to be back home. Now, let me say this. They say Washington, D.C. is Hollywood for ugly people. <laughs> so if I don't make it across the finish line this November, you know why. Right? <laughs> now, for disclosure purposes, I didn't want to say that joke, you know. Because I'd say, I told them, you know, I think folks will think I'm vain if I say that, uh, that joke. But then staff said, boss, we have news for you. There are a lot of folks who think you're vain already, you know. <laughs> so I want you to know that there is, and I know, that there's a lot of diversity of a political opinion uh, in this room. Whether you lean to the left, whether you lean to the right, or points in between, uh, in the center. I think that we can all agree that when it comes to making sure that every single Californian has a fair shot at success, that we are actually succeeding in the greatest state, in the greatest nation in the world. California's economy is among the largest, the most powerful and influential economies in the world. In fact, we are the fifth largest economy on planet Earth. Now, I want to put this in context for all of you, because the largest economy is the United States of America in the aggregate as a whole. It is China, Japan, it is Germany. And at number five is our great state, the state of California. And that is because of the innovation. That is because of our willingness to, to establish, or I should say, challenge the status quo and disrupt the establishment authority. And if you're remotely interested, our economy is larger than that of Vladimir Putin's Russia to put this in context. And that is our great state of California. We have been successful because California is not afraid to try new things. We're not afraid to do everything within our power to propel our state head long into the future. Here we just don't uh, push the edge of the envelope. We in fact tear that envelope apart into shreds. And that is because of the legacy that we have built for our great state the tradition of open-mindedness in our policies and the way we do business. The world is looking at California right now as we speak. And we must lead. We must lead on America's behalf. Now, I've never been prouder to call California my home state, our home state. And whether you're an immigrant from another part of the world, whether it's the Western Hemisphere, south to the border of us, whether you're from China, whether you're from Taiwan, Vietnam, whether you're a few generations removed from Scotland or Ireland, or whether you're an immigrant from New York, you know, or elsewhere. <laughs> from education to the environment, from high wages to health care to human rights, California is proof positive that progressive values put into action improve the human condition for all individuals. We are the innovation nation state, home to Hollywood and the Silicon Valley the best public university system in the world, the University of California. And we live in a state 
were the son of an immigrant, an immigrant mother with a third grade education, who had the courage of her conviction to cross a border against a current, a wave of bigotry, could actually come to this country in clean homes in the wealthiest enclaves in America, in La Jolla, California, the beautiful palatial homes with the ocean panoramic views of the Pacific Ocean. That this woman who worked her fingers to the bone, this woman who paid for the rent, put that roof over my head, to put the clothes on my back and food on the table. This is the woman who, again, had the courage of her conviction and the audacity, the audacity to leave her small village where she grew up on dirt floors with no electricity and no internal plumbing. She had the courage of her convictions to come to the greatest state and the greatest nation in the world. And that's what makes California such a magical place for all of us, that the youngest child of a single immigrant mother with a third grade education could rise to become the leader of your California State Senate, first Latino in more than a century, and rise to become, in the top two, a candidate for the United States Senate. That's what makes our state the greatest state in America, the greatest state in the world, bar none, California. The magic of California is the same magic that brings so many stories to life on the silver screen. Again, we have the audacity to achieve the impossible, even when we've been told to be patient or to wait your turn. And that very same, that very same audacity has thrust California onto the global stage on so many issues, from climate change to trade to immigration and health care. People around the world are counting on us to lead the way. Now, I'm grateful that we have one of my colleagues from the Assembly, Richard Bloom. Richard Bloom has done an amazing job on a whole variety of issues, whether it's the film and TV tax credit, the new 2.0 version, or whether it is the issue of climate change and the environment, whether it's the issue of small businesses and how we prop them up so they can actually grow and prosper. And I want to thank you, my friend, for the great work that you have done, the way you have acquitted yourself representing us here and to the west of us in, in Santa Monica. You have done a fantastic job. And quite frankly, I think he's the best dressed assembly member in the California State Assembly. Now, we know these are very difficult times in our nation's history. In fact, I would submit to each and every one of you, regardless of your partisanship and where you may be politically, these are very dangerous times. These are very perilous times in our nation's history. And there are many who look at California and write us off because they think that all we do is resist the current president of the United States, Donald Trump. But I say that they are gravely mistaken Resistance for resistance sake is directionless. It's a, a, it's a circle in perpetual motion. You're going nowhere, like a dog chasing its tail. It lacks true purpose. But in California, we must be focused in our resistance. Resistance with results. Resistance that we focus on lifting each other up. That we stand up for each other for our health, for our planet, the air that we breathe and the water that we drink, for the rights of immigrants and working families. We've made real progress, and we're building an economy. And I want to say that this is an amazing state. This is our beautiful state. And that's why it's absolutely vital, if not critical, that we remain America's exceptional example, a beacon of hope, an opportunity in a very uncertain world that we as Californians and ultimately as Americans are not going to allow one electoral aberration reverse generations of progress at the height of our historic diversity, our scientific advancement, our economic output, and our sense of global responsibility, not in a great state like California, my friends.
Now, a couple things is that just this past June, both Richard, Bloom and I, and our colleagues in both the Assembly as well as the Senate, we passed a budget that invests more education dollars than ever before. We also have invested $1.5 billion to clean up our air. Now, our air measurably is much cleaner than it was 30 years ago, but we know we have much work to do still. But our investments and our commitments are real because we want to make sure that the next generation doesn't choke on the same smog that we've choked on for so many decades. Now, we're also building on California's legacy of climate leadership with Senate Bill 100. My bill to require 100% clean, renewable, zero carbon energy for California by the year 2045 is without doubt an ambitious goal. It's also within our reach. We can grow our economy. We can put people to work, whether it's energy efficiency or whether it's harnessing the power of the wind and sun because it's free. And it doesn't cost American lives in the Middle East or elsewhere. And we should make sure that we democratize our climate change benefits to make sure that every individual, regardless of who they are and where they come from, regardless of the hue of their skin, regardless of the la their legal status, regardless of who they love or which God they pray to, has access to the cleanest and the greatest technologies when it comes to clean energy for the state of California. Now, in the next few weeks, we're going to have a very vigorous debate in the California State Legislature on our future for 100% clean energy. I can tell you this, with the friends and solid allies like Richard Bloom and others, it's within our reach, and it is possible, because that's what we do here in California. We think the impossible, and we just don't think it as pipe dreams, but we actually accomplish it. We actually accomplish it. That's what we do. We have that opportunity. And by the way, in California alone, we have created 500,000 jobs in the clean energy space alone. That is 10 times more jobs in the clean energy space in California than there are coal mining jobs in all of America. And it is within reach and it is possible. So what I would submit to you, it is the political leadership as well throughout the country that has failed their constituents to move the policies that catalyze investment that creates the technologies that are necessary that put Californians to work, in this case, other Americans to work in other parts of the country. I can tell you this, we're not holding back the free market. We're actually catalyzing that investment, and that innovation to create the technologies to meet our ambitious target goals. Let me say this, as the fifth largest economy in the world, I also acknowledge, and I know, that this economy is not working for everyone. This economy is leaving many folks behind. And that opportunity gap is increasing even more so, even with the greatest technologies that exist today. Homelessness in our great state is not a political issue. It's a humanitarian issue. It impacts our neighbors, our families, our friends, our businesses, regardless of who they are and where they come from. The city of Los Angeles today is facing a major crisis of gargantuan proportions, epic proportions. And the sad reality is that we can't hide from it. We are the national embarrassment for the nation when it comes to the issue of homelessness. But I feel very encouraged when we have strong community leaders, business leaders, and strong members of the city council have spoken loudly and proudly and have stepped up and stepped out to do what they can do to deal with the issue of homelessness. Now, in 2016, just a few years ago, I authored a measure called No Place Like Home, which Richard was a big supporter of. It would put $2 billion, and that's a billion, with a B, a capital B, back to work by housing the chronically homeless and providing wraparound services for those struggling with mental illnesses. Now, unfortunately, I know a lot of my friends here in Hollywood can relate. Unfortunately, it's been tied up in a court of law through litigation. 
for folks who don't believe that we should utilize the $2 billion to build comprehensive housing for those who are mentally ill in whether it's the city of LA or San Diego or Santana or Sacramento or San Francisco or elsewhere. So this year, I've worked with my Republican colleague from Orange County, a very far to the right colleague, John Morlock. And together, we put the $2 billion on the ballot for this year. Now, be mindful about one thing. The $2 billion, what the capital be? I'm not raising taxes. No personal income tax, no property tax, no sales tax, not raising taxes at all whatsoever. I'm repurposing dollars and giving it the highest priority to build permanent solutions so we can get people off the street. And some of them will, quite frankly, turn their lives around. Some of them will be a lifelong journey, but they deserve that dignity and respect. And quite frankly, as we know fiscally, we spend so much more money on the issue of homelessness in LA through emergency services. We've got to do it in a much more intelligent way. And it's my sincerest hope that the people here today and the people of California will embrace our efforts this November. Now, when the bill was signed by the governor, homelessness increased 14%. And in the wealthiest state, in the wealthiest nation in the world, the most powerful state in the nation, this is absolutely unacceptable. We also have to take steps to preserve the character of our state, the qualities that make California special. And first and foremost in my mind is the funding we've secured to build more green spaces, shore up our water infrastructure, as well as create jobs. Now, I'm going to take a guess that a lot of folks here voted for Proposition 68. And if you didn't, just say you did, so you make me feel good. Proposition 68 that was on the ballot June 5th, which passed overwhelmingly to provide $4 billion for parks and open space, for water infrastructure, for flood prevention. Well, I wrote Proposition 68, which was Senate Bill 5. Both my colleagues, Eduardo Garcia, and the speaker, Anthony Rendon, and I collaborated together. And we placed this on the ballot, on Prop 68. And for our Hollywood Central Park and our other parks where there's park-starved communities here, it's going to be a boom because we're going to have close to, of the $4 billion for the state, we'll have close to $1 billion, not exactly, but close to $1 billion that will be provided for communities that are park-starved throughout the state of California because all of our children deserve to have green grass grow under their feet. They deserve access to parks and open space, to breathe clean air. And whether it's active or passive parks, all of us deserve that. So it is my hope that once these dollars start rolling down, that the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce and the successor to Laron Gubler is going to really, really put their muscle into this and make sure that Hollywood gets all the money it deserves in our community to draw down on those dollars. I'm going to finalize my points right now. An issue that's a bit closer to home for all of you, the Hollywood Tax Credit Program. In fact, just this year, we extended this incredibly effective program to 2025. Thank you, Richard Bloom. And just this year, 19, 19 films received more than $52 million in tax credits, expected to generate $258 million in pay for hard-working Californians. These credits will put classic, beloved stories like A Wrinkle in Time, as well as A Call of the Wild, on silver screens across the nation. And we sent a clear message, too, that there's absolutely no room for sexual assault or harassment in this industry. By requiring applicants to provide training, hotlines for reporting harassment, which I did in the State Senate, and well-defined avenues for victims of harassment to seek help. This is our part of our commitment and our values to Hollywood, making sure it is equitable for all individuals, again, regardless of who you are and where you come from. Now, let me say this. Here's a kicker, folks. This year's tax credits translates to jobs for more than 26,000 people. And for those who have complained that this is Los Angeles-centric, 
10 of those films of the 19 will shoot outside of Los Angeles to help grow our economy and put people to work throughout the state. Because of this film and TV tax credit, California is already easily upstaging cities like Philadelphia as well as the state of New Jersey. Studios are actually rewriting projects to be set right here in our golden state because there are no better trained workers in the nation than right here in California. There's no better infrastructure than right here in California. As we know, there is no better weather in the nation than right here in California. We have the best rank and file men and women who do what they do every single day. This tax credit in no small part to the hard work of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce are reuniting families and bringing families together where they no longer have to spend months and time in Georgia or New Orleans or New Mexico or Louisiana, well New Orleans, Louisiana, you know, or anywhere else in the country. And I'm going to make it clear that no one is going to outcompete us. Since we launched this tax credit in 2014, and I was the main negotiator for that one in 2014, we have seen 30,000 cast members hired right here in California and 18,000 crew members. Over the next seven years, I know that we will continue to watch the film and tax credit industry grow and put even more Californians to work. And I want you to know that I made sure that we had our own homegrown voice on the California Film Commission because that's why I appointed Donnell. Donnell, that again, to be a commissioner with the California Film Commission, our own Hollywood. Max Factor Museum to make sure that we have a voice from Hollywood that's on the California Film Commission. And I know you're going to do an amazing job. And now as the new president, the new chair of the Hollywood, you know, Chamber of Commerce and being a California Film Commissioner, that's a marriage that only Hollywood can bring together. So I'm looking forward to your incredible leadership and in bringing it back home here today. Now, in conclusion, I want to say this. I know I've covered a lot of ground, but quite frankly, there's so much to cover. I can be here actually for a few hours more and get into the arcane details of, of policies that are really going to improve the human condition for all Californians, again, in regards of who you are and where you come from. But in the interest of time, and it's a Friday, you got to get home, you got to get back to work, I'm going to wrap up my remarks right now. For many years, I've joined you all here in Hollywood speaking to you from this very stage about the work that we're doing in your state capital, in Sacramento. The work that would not be able, that I would not be able to accomplish without your help, without your support. Hollywood, Hollywood sent me back in 2006 to your state capital. First, as your assembly member, then as your state senator, and then, as the Senate leader, the president of the California State Senate. Hollywood sent me to your state capital. Many of you may already know that this will be my last year speaking to you as a state senator, as the Senate leader emeritus of the California State Senate. In November, this particular act in our story will come to a close. Perhaps next year, someone else will be taking the stage and delivering an address to each and every one of you. But it is my hope that this no November, we'll begin a new act together, where we continue our work creating jobs and building our economy and strengthening businesses and making sure that every single Californian has a fair shake at, success, at the success story that they deserve. So whether it's here in the California State Legislature or from Washington, D.C. in the chambers of the United States Senate, you have my word. I am committed to working with each and every one of you to keep Hollywood, Los Angeles, and the entire Golden State, the state that we love, thriving in the spotlight for years to come. With that, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you very much. From the bottom of my heart, I love Hollywood. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.
Well, we want to thank uh, Kevin for doing a great job for us in Sacramento and representing us. So we're ready to adjourn, but we did have a gift for him. Oh, yeah. Uh, Based on. Which, uh, Dee Dee, do you have that, if it's right? There, Jeff's going to bring it. Uh, just a little something to remember Hollywood. This is a collector's item out of print, and uh, we thought you'd like to have it. So thank you, and thank you all for joining us. Well, this is a, uh, it's actually very hard to get this book, uh, but we thought you might.